evening. Welcome to my live chess stream here. International Master William Pascal and we are streaming on Twitch and leechess.org. In Hungarian we would say pont.org. What's up? Bob. Bob is here. Nefidov. Arsenal fan. Acerbate hiding somewhere in the group. We've got a number of subscribers raring to go. I know Bob gets a little nervous when I'm late. What's up, guys? It's weird Wednesday. Weird Wednesday, unusual openings. With the macro panda and myself. Unusable openings. Man, Nefedov. Nefedov. He's just got the longest blacklist of anyone here. <clears throat> All right. Sensitive, sensitive. Don't be so sensitive like me. All right. So we're going to get started with unusual openings. 5 plus 3 through 7 plus 3. No infighting with the children. I have better things to do than babysitting. That's why I don't teach chess in the schools anymore. So Nefedov and um, and Bob, if you don't mind. Well, he is annoying, but he's also funny. So they kind of balance out. You know what I mean? You know, everybody has their pluses and minuses. But at least, you know, it's better to be interesting, I would say, than to be a wallflower. Annoying orange. <laughs> yes. Annoying orange is similar. Yes. All right. Thanks for reminding me of that, Arsenal fan, the annoying orange. So, guys, if you'd like to challenge me something between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3, I haven't played a warm up game. I can grab a victim from the, uh, the lobby. All right. Create a game. Blobby's here. Yeah, I have one one of my closest friends I, I absolutely hate. Well, he's not a friend anymore, but you know, some people people go they go too far to the annoying side and then you can't yeah, you can't live with it anymore. So it's it's a fine line, I agree. Um Blobix and Nefidov are challenging. Oh man. Alright. <clears throat> Two tough games right away. Can I get like an eleven hundred or something to start with? I didn't have time to play a warm up game. I'd like to play like an 1100. All right. Why am I always hungry when the stream starts? I just had a snack. Hungry again. Just had a snack. Why would I be hungry after eating a snack? It's crazy. All right. Well, let's try not to have personal fights here. I'm not going to be a moderator. Some people seem to reduce their rating deliberately. deliberately. Um, well, they just don't care. It does seem that way. Okay, I'm just not going to pay attention to you trolls today. So, Blobix is playing E4. <sighs> If I play c5, he plays the b3. The b3 Sicilian starting to get out. It's like playing, um, it's like playing gym. Or regular. Let's play e45. I never really played e45 against Blubix that I can recall. I mean, we've played 19 games. Yeah, well, the Aliakin is weird enough normally, but I actually almost conclude, I almost consider that one of my openings. So, I think the defining rule about this weird opening stream for me is, is it something that I play on a regular basis or not? That's kind of the most important thing. So, 
it's not literally necessarily that weird of openings that we're talking about, but weird openings for me, things I don't play. Um, here, I've got to get I've got to get out of the regular standard Lopez though. I think that's just too mundane. Lubbock's probably plays like the exchange variation. Speaking of Nefidov, can you imagine Nefidov plays the black side with this position? On the black side, he plays the Schliemann, but on the white side, he plays the exchange variation. That's weird, man. Got the the Nesbadinov style Reptar. Actually, ne Nesbadinov never played F5, but the inconsistency. All right. Let's try something strange here right away that I've never really played. I know your openings well, Nefedov, because you've played the most of everyone against me, obviously. So what happens if I play G6 now? It delayed Smyslav. Blubik's not even phased. Just instantaneously. Instantaneously resuming. Merle, are you early or late? Ironically, Blavik's played an opening a little bit like this against me with the black pieces the other day. So, am I just screwed here? Because that would make me very sad. I think I'm screwed already. I'm sad. I'm screwed already. I don't know why Blobix is playing so fast. Blobix must have multiple accounts, and he plays like millions of bullet games on his other secret account. And right before this game, he played like a hundred bullet games, and he's he's just or on another site, and he's just like in bullet mode. I was basically terrified of knight to g5, but he just instantly played bishop g5. I mean, I'm sure this is also a good move. Okay, queen d7, knight d5 is total tragedy. Okay, so 94, 94. He's just like blitzing me. Clearly, Blubix is angry that he lost yesterday in the blitz tournament or something. He wants to show me up now by playing the entire game in eight seconds. So I look like an idiot. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Knight e4 is a big problem. So if I take on c3 and just castle, how bad is it? You know, it's starting to look like that's my only option here. Eighteen points away from being the highest rated Richard Smith in England. The book is like this thick with the Richard Smiths.
there was this funny time when I was at the U.S. Open in like 1991 or two, and obviously chess, not golf. Um, so I was at the U.S. Open chess tournament in 1992, and this guy came up to me. He was like, "Hey, how are you doing? My name is Joel Pascal." I just wanted to say hi. He was like from the south somewhere. Just wanted to introduce himself because like he's the only other like rated Pascal in the United States. <laughs> I thought that was kind of fun. Funny, you know, that you would think of that, but it is kind of cool. I mean, it's a rare, it's a more rare name. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? Blobby terrorizing me. Okay, now he's threatening D5. It's just a threat after threat sort of situation. Just one threat after another. I feel like I'm kind of caving with this move. But I'm down to two minutes. That does lead to problems. But I mean, I've seen old players do that, Arsenal fan. There was this funny, another US Open story where this guy literally, I saw it happen like adjacent to me or maybe two boards down. This old man literally sat down at the wrong board and started to continue the game, some other guy's game. I mean, it wasn't like the first move, you know, he was, he was literally sitting down in an entirely new position. It, it, it was sort of stunning. I mean, I thought I'm bad for, like, once making two moves in a row in my game. Blobix. What's that? James? Southern Pascal. I didn't see the first part of the question. Apparently the guy was from like Tennessee and um, originally the people with my name in this country tend to conglomerate around like Pennsylvania, but there were quite a few West Virginia going down as far as like Tennessee. Okay, the Blobix. The Blobix. The Blob. This opening was not fun for me. The time pressure is not fun, though, honestly. I didn't enjoy time pressure here. 95. Trading pieces. Okay, I mean, the time is defining my play here. I just want to swap material. B5, B5 weakening A6. It's a move. Definitely not something I want to do here. I just want to draw at this point. I'm down four minutes to one in a microscopically worse position. There's complications. I mean, my a6 pawn becomes weak. Yeah, but I mean, fundamentally, Richie, that makes sense, I guess. My problem is the clock. Big, big time. Clock problem. Clock clicker. Playing for a draw. Yevgeny Romanov would be angry. Blobix had way with the same thing against you. So it was Uber Driver that I played in this line, not Blobix. Okay. That's right. My bad. 
So I'm copying your openings now, Uber Driver. Octomom. I'll call Octomom and ask her what she thinks about it, Nefidov. The Octo. Are you Octo Travel? We shall see. Draw. I offer a draw. Please draw. Draw, please. Fisher described this as an unbeatable defense. Gave it up after a few games because he wanted to win. I mean, did you play the same order as me? Like when I played ninety seven on move four. Uber driver. I'm not sure my move order was legit. I know you can do ninety seven, but I'm not sure the subsequent moves were okay or not. I had a game with Black two years ago in the uh, Budapest Team Championship against this guy, this kid who played A six directly. Um and then Bishop A four G6. But the risk is they play the exchange variation, which Nefidov does, which I hate. Merle Dixon, thank you. I'm glad you survived Bubba. Oh, Bubba the Snake. Bob didn't make it, guys. We're going to have the Bob Memorial Tournament. Password. We'll have the Bob Memorial. I just was excited to have, the, have our first mem real memorial tournament. So that part of him surviving the snake is kind of sad. Declining a draw. Draw declined. Declinement of draw. But maybe black is better now. E-file. Hype. HTFP, subscribe with the Twitch Prime. Guys, thank you for being so generous. Acerbate with a huge donation the other day. A thousand. Jim, Dragon BC, Blobby, Merle Dixon, Oms, and Mr. Coffee. Mr. Coffee just arrived to threatening C4. Spassky of Boris. Challenge count. You want to challenge Nefidov? He's also at war with, with Infinite Flash Chess, who calls him, <laughs> calls him Count Nefidov. Our challenges, we've got... That's a rated correspondence game. Okay. Nefidov, Bob, Bib, Bibi. Bibi Sakamano. He's running for Israeli Prime Minister, I guess. Save a dog. Playing for a win. Mr. Bill. He found the defense. <sighs> Alas, black is slightly better. But don't provoke. Don't provoke. Just don't. Please just don't. I didn't think of Queen A8. 
That's a strong suggestion. Basically, Blobix is playing to win on time. Oh no. I just dropped a pawn. It's still hard for white to make progress. <laughs> Ridiculous. Good game. We played well, especially the end game. Yeah, Bloopy's good. He's like trying to tempt me into overextending myself or something. What's the point of this, man? Should have accepted my first draw for. All right. Anyway, Nefdab is next. Then, BB, Save a Dog, and Arsenal fan. You're welcome. I want to see the opening if we don't mind, like just briefly. Let's see if I really played that correctly. Yeah, I was thinking about bishop c4 here, though. That's an interesting move. I mean, I knew this was theory. Oh, I'm supposed to play b5, so d5 is a clear mistake. I knew I did something wrong. Yikes. So this is just patently bad, d5. Oh my god. Yeah, this is just bad. So he's following the opening book. I was afraid of knight g5. Well, apparently that's nothing. Interesting. Bloby knows everything. And then on bishop g5? Funny. Yeah, queen d6. Knight c3. But knight d2 might be better, because then I can't trade it off. That's funny. We followed this game. But here this guy, Croman didn't take. I don't understand how you can castle here and allow knight e4. Wow. Anyway. No winning chances for black. I thought I'd be back in two minutes. He'll be back in two minutes. Queen b4 and knight e4. I know, Blueby, but I don't really like having my queen e4. I mean, my queen on b4 there. The queen looks extremely awkward and trappable. That looks like a really good way to get your queen trapped, if I've ever seen one. The spider senses. The spider senses are ting tingling. Um, I just wouldn't want to go to b4 unless I was 100% certain. Um, all right. Nefedov said to wait, so we'll have to play another game. Or maybe maybe he'll be back. He said two minutes. Let's just wait a minute. But that's all we're going to wait. Bloby says, was not unusual for me. I played this against Elaine Villanueva in Martinique in 1998. Wow, that's not that long ago. Just 20 years. You guys think I'm being sarcastic, but... Bloby has games from the 80s. 
Um, so do I. Story time. Now this is Blobik's story, a game from 1998. Abhijit Gupta played this. <laughs> What's he thinking? Oh man. So why is the analysis engine saying this is like plus 0.7 for white? But then it goes down after queen d6. Knight c3. Castles. Knight e4. Queen b4. I just don't like the queen there. And it's not just that I don't like the queen there. I don't like the monster knight on e4 that can do all sorts of damage, like going to c5. So this is completely logical. Show Mickey. A little like the line in the Panov that I play. Why do you call the Uber driver classical, Roy Lopez? Well, anyone can challenge, but the subscribers get to play first. All right, Nefedov has 60 seconds. 59, 58, 57. I don't want to hear him complaining, you know, that I didn't take his challenge. He said two minutes. He has 40 seconds till his two minutes are up. But to be fair, Nefedov and some of the other players, Bob, are in Europe. So I think we should be a little bit more, you know, considerate of the European players who are staying up to like 12 o'clock to watch. Um, all right, Nefedov's back. Nefedov is also, Bob... Our number one opponent, 241 games. This is game 242. You don't see devotion like that very often. FBI's Bigfoot file. In 1976, the FBI... Whatever. All right. Anyway... We don't discuss serious chess here, September. This is just for fun. I haven't seen um, any of the games from Norway. No time for serious chess. The Nefda file. It's not Chigorin. It's Nimzovich. Arsenal's got the opening knowledge of homeschooled I am. All right. What's wrong, Asterbe? What happened? <laughs> Asterbe had a snake bite. Bob, see if you can get him your your insurance discount card. Knight e7 or queen d7? Have you ever resigned a winning position in a classical tournament game because you didn't see the winning move and thought you had lost? I don't remember offhand. HTFP. I would say most likely, but I'm not sure. Uber driver's making absurd suggestions. King F7. Well, I mean, I would do it in the Karo Khan sometimes, but I wouldn't do it without a good reason. The one with blobs. The, the theme of the blobs today. Blob theme. Blob X. Um, yeah. This is why I didn't put my knight on E7. I think it has more use here. Rat style. Do 
just randomly without a thought play that. Okay. If I didn't even think about it, it was like instantaneous. Instantaneously. Bang. I just like went through three different moves there. All right. Now, if I was doing the Blobix thing where he's like playing super fast. But Blobix at least really knew the opening, you know? Nefidah was just like playing fast on practical, just basically for practical reasons. He doesn't really know anything about this opening. Oh man, that fit off. You have H3 here. Good God, man. You see, you guys are, th are really throwing me with a super fast play. It's upsetting me and I'm making mistakes. It's funny though, Nefidov missed a really strong move there because he's just trying to play fast. It's an increment game, take your time. Even worst case scenario, even if you use up all 5 minutes and 51 seconds, you still get 3 seconds per move. There's no excuse for making mistakes, and I'm included. I also, I also play too fast. My excuse is that I'm not warmed up yet. What's your excuse? Man, what a white square bishop. Uber driver. Uber bishop. Now Uber's suggestion of king f7. <sighs> so that's the thing, I don't know where to put my king. You've got every possibility. Castle's queen side, king d7, king f7. Maybe not Castle's King side, but H takes G4 with a super chain. Super chunk. That was a band. I could definitely have castle queen side already. I do have a thing for kind of maintaining maximum flexibility. If I take, he opens the F file for himself. Otherwise, I have problems protecting my pawn on H4 now. If I have to play H3, then I close off the whole king side. So maybe bishop e7, knight f3, bishop e4. Wait. Waiting. After you, the waiting game. I played 200 and something games, and it off. It's pretty, you, you know, someone pretty well after that many games. This was an amazing move. Fixing my pawn. Now what? Yeah, but now it's not as good. Castles. Man. Whatever. Try to get him on the king's side.
Uber Bishop. I think I can just sacrifice the H pawn. I mean, it's like a king's Indian on the other side of the board. I feel I was play here in this game is a little bit shallow. Okay, this I don't understand. Wow. That is extremely materialistic. Okay, it's late. You know, maybe he's just tired and made a blunder. I don't think it's a blunder, though. He did this on purpose. No, I guess it's a blunder. I'm a blender. Man, he blundered. He's just tired. That's the problem with it being midnight. I thought his point was to go back to F3. I mean, ironically, he can go back to F3. He's down a pawn, but... Is he actually... He's not even down a pawn, is he? Not even down a pawn. Best I have is, like, maybe takes an E4 with a positional advantage. Oh, it's 11 UK time. Okay. Well, late enough. All right, Bob, Bibi. Bibi Sakamano. Beer is food. Baby. Baby Bob. Weird openings Wednesday. Hippopotamus. 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 Strange to see Bobby sacrificing that classical style of his recent games with this dry kingside fianchetto. Hippopotami. Waiting for weaknesses. Now I have the option to play a kind of close Sicilian after c5. Hmm. Uber driver. More clues. Chris Chase, Fide Master. I once had a match with Chris. Remember what happened. Probably didn't win if I don't remember. Um, but he was always much higher rated than me in the beginning. Then I became stronger. Okay. Um, well, he's a big lover of the, the modern defense himself. Uber driver. Love to play the modern. Oh, you're talking about... Oh, he played knight h6. I got you. I, I forgot. I thought you were playing a hippo. Right, right. Yeah, Chris liked to do that sometimes. He played some fishy-looking moderns, but he would confuse the opponents. That's kind of what you're trying to do. I mean, that's the way that Soltis played. Played the modern. Create some confusion, basically. Keep them at a distance. So basically the hippo is when you think kettle both bishops and place your knights on e7 and d7. I had a bad game against Blubby doing that. Was it in my simul? Then he later messed it up. 
and I don't remember if it was a draw or what, but I felt like I was in a very bad position against you, Bloby, in that simul where I tried to play a hippo type position. I was toast at some point. But I usually only play the hippo when I play the English defense. And white does a specific move like a3. Because against the English defense, a3, you know, it's not a useful move for white, really. So it seems like it's slightly more justified when white's going to waste a move on something like a3. But you can just do the hippo. This sort of double fianchetto goes way back. I mean, if you look at games from, historically speaking, games from a long time ago, I know that for, for sure um, Gunsberg played double fianchetto against Steinitz. So that's that's a really long time ago. Bob, are you copying me on purpose just to be annoying? C5, knight B5. Knight F8. You can never get mated with a knight on F8. Can you turn a hippo into a hedgehog? Yes. Probably you can. You have to play c5 in exchange on d4. It's a hippo hedgehog evolution. Absolutely. Evolution of hippo into hedgehog. I don't know. It seems like Bob's evi kind of evolving lately. He's playing much, I don't know, more solid or something. I think that snake bite, it's kind of like, maybe it's like, um, maybe it's like Spider-Man or whatever, you get bit by an animal. Snake man. Fuchsia hip hog. Hip hogger. Good to see Fuchsia. Playing chess, telling story, getting bite by snake. Flirting with nurses. That's the story of Bob's life. Flirting with nurses sounds like fun. But I flirt better when I'm drunk and there's no alcohol in the hospital. So that's a problem. Castles. Mutual castellation. Bob is better. Bob has more space. And Bob's also controlling himself. He's not overreaching. I don't want to draw. Thanks. Um, my flask. No, I don't have a flask. I know some players who do, chess players who do have flasks. That's old school. Curdo used to always have his flask, Fide Master, JC. He'd have a briefcase. In the, in the briefcase was the flask. That's a serious professional. That's a serious professional chess player when you got the flask in the briefcase. Consummate. I would say consummate. We're trying to make a hip hog. Make your hippo great again. Dial of Benoni with d5. Please play d5. I love a Benoni right now. Benoni sandwich. Bob's been fairly careful though. He doesn't <laughs> he wants to play bishop e3. I'm really like in my mind, it's so funny. In my mind I'm waiting for white to literally play bishop e3. It it's like you're just you know, that's normal. But it don't exist here.
H for Bob. He is playing the Benoni. I love it. I love me some Knight on F5. It's like... I love that square. That's why I play Knight H6 on move 1. My 3 a.m. defense. I guess I can win a pawn, but I'm not that enthused about winning a pawn here. That's just so materialistic. I don't want a stinking pawn. We play for squares. Who was it that predicted it? It was Uberdriver? Uberdriver's all about Queen A8, Queen B8 today. The distance queen theme. The struggle for E5 and C5. It's like a chess 960 or something. Oh, this is such a good Benoni for black. It's just ridiculous. I've even got like B5 when I want to play it. No, it's terrible for white. Horrible. It's like Apu from The Simpsons. Horrible, terrible, delicious. Where, <laughs> where's infinite flash chest when we need him? <laughs> oh, slice! Look at that hippo, hippo bishop. <laughs> Hypno bishop. We just called you infinite flash chess. Summoned your your inner Apu, and you heard us calling for the inner Apu. Thank you and come again. La Linea. They removed him from The Simpsons? No way. I thought they weren't going to do that. That's crazy. Did they kill him off or something? He moved back to India? What happened? How do they justify that? Okay, Arsenal fan Richie. My favorite sound bites from The Simpsons are like all Apu quotes. Um, okay, E4. The the hippo has some serious. <laughs> the hippo had some serious bite, man. It is the most dangerous animal in Africa. It kills more people than than any other. It kills more than snakes, Bob. Hippos. <laughs> Bob, Bob got Bob got bitten by a hippo. Tell them that at the hospital. Hello. <laughs> 911. I just had a hippo bite. All right. It's not funny. It's stupid, I know. The first killer is the camel. Camel culture. There's an ant crawling up the wall, some sort of omen. Arsenal fan. I'm going to play the classical system here. Yeah, you see sometimes videos. There'd be like whole groups of crocodiles and the hippos aren't even phased. In Hungarian, it's called Vizilo. Vizilo. It's a water horse, which is probably similar in Russian. I don't know what they call hippos in German. Probably just, you know, hippopotamus or whatever. But but I think in Russian it might be water horse too. Nefidab would know. Nilpferd, of course. That's what I was going to say. Arsenal, like, I had the same exact game against somebody the other day. Nile horse. Okay. That's basically a that's basically a water horse. 
rather specific. The origins of the terminology of water horse. <sighs> Flying ants. Um, so Arsenal fan, is it just a coincidence that I had the exact same game against some guy in my Simon on Sunday? Or did you see that game and now you're like inspired to play the same line? I literally never had this position until Sunday in my life in a single game. And now I've got the exact same position on the board for the second time in my life inside of one week against Arsenal. That's weird. Yeah, I mean, I had the same feeling, but against the Russian guy who played it on Sunday, he kind of built up some sort of kingside stuff, it, it felt like. I'm going to play a little differently here. Damn it, Ant. <sighs> this Ant is, like, all aggressive. Gross. Get out of here. I don't want to smash him, but he's, like, in my space, man. I tried to blow him away. He got closer. I hate bugs. Dude, what do you want? All right. He's, like, on the computer. What do you want with the computer? You just smell my... Greasy fingers. He's coming to get me. He's coming to get me. Get out of here. And he's like stuck on the owl. He got onto an off ramp. <laughs> he can't get off. Now he's going back. It's really amusing actually. It's on this like cable and it just there's like one direction he can go down but he wants to come back up now because he doesn't want to go down to the darkness he's stuck on i-95 and he can't get to the off-ramp i'm a little weird man but you know i'm living alone here chef joe is coming down tonight he had late duty dog sitting or something like that Overtime dog sitting. The bane of every international master. Dog sitting overtime. Every self respecting international master. Bugs kind of creep me out. I mean, I'm not like terrified of them, but I don't want it like suddenly crawling up my hand and stuff. Um, Alright, bishop e6, d5, bishop takes d5, bishop takes f6. That's kind of a weird line. Bishop takes f3. Probably not a good line for me. Knight c6 is different from my other game. Oh yeah, thanks. Thanks for pointing that out, Uber driver. Spoiler, bishop takes b7. Spoiler alert. I saw that. No, against the Russian guy in the simul, um, I played knight c6 right away. That wasn't an issue. I mean, infinite flash chess, this is weird Wednesday. I was supposed to play an unusual opening, but but Astrobate, I mean, Arsenal fan, close. Um, play B4, so I think that's weird enough. And what am I trying to say? I don't know, got lost in my thoughts. Anyways, knight c6 d5 is kind of for real. I mean, I don't want to be like Grishuk and put my knight on a5 for the rest of my life. Guess I'm going to have to settle for something like knight bd7. Bdi's. a5. Hmm. Knight c6, d5. I don't think that's the right idea. I could play a5, but he's just going to break my structure at some point with a3. Queen c7. Yeah, that's an idea. I'm just not feeling it, guys, in this position. I'm just not feeling it. All right. Whatever. Knight 
Now I'm just two minutes behind the clock for no good reason. So Chef Joe, I was talking about Chef Joe will be down, but not till late after the stream finishes, unfortunately. So Arsenal is just, just fully down a pawn now after c4, but that makes life easier for both of us. The mobile chess library is coming. No, I don't know. I got some fried chicken in the fridge. Probably eat leftovers. Nothing, nothing cooking tonight. Too late. Too late after the stream to start cooking. 8 p.m. I'll be starving by the time this is over. Let's go. He'll have to settle for cold chicken. Cold ants. He'd go out for some Chinese, maybe. Chef Joe is half Chinese, so he likes he likes him some Chinese food, which which is good because I like it too. Madramas likes cooking discussions. Just randomly, I clicked on Orlo Vachessa stream, and I saw she had a stream where she was like cooking. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, maybe I should do that." We'll have a cooking chess stream. Something's missing here. Not sound. Bishop on f3. It's played like that weird variation of the French. What do they do against the French? How does that work again? After d5. Bishop d3 against the French. The way that Anita Gara drew against... Levon in Gibraltar. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three, four. How's my math? Math man. Bishop d5, knight d5, knight d5, bishop g7, king g7, bishop d5. Alright, I don't know. And I don't care. I'm taking it. Yummy. Mmm, delicious. Chess boxing. I'm not going to try to give my bee pawn away, but I'm up. Sack the queen. So I have to settle for just one pawn? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Settling for one pawn. One pawn only. <sighs> okay. All right, but we got to make sure we, we get a good deal on that one pawn. Greed is my middle name. Everlasting pressure against B B seven. Such a thematic game by Arsenal fan. So consistent. It's irritating to be tied down to B seven. I have a fortune right here. How? I can't read. It's too dark in here. How about another fortune? <laughs> That's what it says. Okay. That's informative. 
It's literally too dark to read. Um, an old fortune is a good fortune. There, Pandas in Budapest. He's not here. You can't insult. It's not polite to insult someone who's not here to defend themselves. Macro Panda doesn't care what you think about original Panda. Hyper accurate. With three minutes more than me. Such a natural. Arsenal is pretty impressive. I mean, seriously, to play like a losing opening and then have three minutes more than me and get to a an end game that is not at all easy for Black to win. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Just basically lose a pawn for nothing. In the opening, get to a reasonable end game down one pawn. Very credible. I really didn't have anything better. Very technical end game. In game land. Endgameland.com. Wish I had more time. Wow. Strange decision. Couldn't resist the temptation to trade it just goes by arse. Okay. He misvaluated the king upon in game. It's a very hard rooking game for black to win. But there are good chances. Um, I don't think that you can define that end game into winning or draw. Um, it's very difficult to do. But clearly better for black. But maybe not. You know, not a forced win necessarily. Um, but you can never trade in the king pawn game down a pawn, of course. Okay, but um, mortal practical sin by Arsenal fan after a tough game. Who else is a subscriber here? American Potzer needs to needs to rechallenge to a casual game if he has more than fifty games. Yeah, it's kind of borderline. He's got thirty rapid. That's awful weird, actually, right there. Why is he twelve hundred in rapid? I don't think I'm gonna play that guy. All right. Anyway, Save a Dog is a subscriber. Quantix. Okay. So, Save a Dog's up next as a subscriber. The King and Pawn expert. Actually, Arsenal fan's a pretty good endgame player. I mean, he's beaten me in some nice endgames before. 
actually, you know, he just sort of had a mind, mind numbing moment. He knows better than that. I don't know. Just sort of panicked. Save a dog. Save a dog. Also very tough. Let's see if he's even here. Dimitrilas is tough. But that endgame, you know, eventually it's going to end up four against three, where I have a rook pawn on the outside. And I think that actually, I mean, it really depends on exactly where the pieces are, but probably in more cases than not, it's a draw, I would say, like 60-40. But again, I'm not an expert on technical endgames. All right, save a dog seems to be gone or something. Let's let save a dog rechallenge. I am white, right? All right, let's let him rechallenge. We're gonna play Dimitrilas and Quantix. Subscriber challenges get to play first, guys. Don't forget to donate to support the stream. I need your donations to stay alive. Please donate and support the stream and subscribe. Asturbate Jim Dragon BC. Actually, Jim's not here, is he? Jim's notably missing today. It's late for the Europeans. Bloby, Merle Dixon, arms on Twitch and Mr. Coffee. Yeah, I mean, Dimitri's score against me is crazy for his rating. And I pointed that out, you know, in the beginning. But I've been on a pretty good run lately. In the beginning, it was like really good for him. But I mean, you know, they're mostly simul games and simul games, of course, are tougher than blitz games for me. All right, um, weird openings. I tend to forget that we're supposed to play weird openings. When I get distracted by the chat, white moves first, I know. All right, the spiny blowfish opening. For Fuchsia, the Sar Sargosa opening. I want to say Sargasso. Sargasso C. Sargo Sargosa opening. She likes everything with C3. If it's C3, it's for me. That's basically Fuchsia's philosophy. Um... But seriously, what do we do next? G6. The squirrel. I'm not sure I want to commit tonight to C2. Frugal pro tips. No, queen a4 and queen h4 and bishop h6, queen g3 and bishop h6. I used to do that with the lobster. I would play h4, h5, and then I would do c3 and queen a4, and after h4, h5, uber driver, it's much more effective. When I was like on tilt and trolling people, I would do that. That's one of my favorite opens. I did that against Kelleher in a blitz game, and I think I beat him. Sometimes they would let you... They would let you. They would go e5, and they would, then you would go c3, queen a4, <laughs> queen h4. Once against Kelleher, I like forked his g7 and, and e5 pawns. He was just doing like d5, e5, whatever. Bishop e7, then queen g3, forks g7 and e5. It's really funny. h4, h5, c3, queen a4, queen h4, queen g3 are like my first. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six moves. Black makes some random five moves, and then after like queen g3. Black has two pawns hanging on g7 and e5. But he can probably sacrifice. <laughs> he can probably sacrifice one. Anyway, um, I hope you all followed that. I'm just feeling the position out here. Queen a4. I feel like I'm just going to transpose to something normal. How can you avoid transposing to something normal here? I mean, how can you avoid it? It's not the London system. That's all I know. Bishop f4. No. I refuse. I refuse to commit to the London system. So Demetrius just does the King's Indian against everything. It's 
looks like something Kamsky could play with white successfully. It is fairly lame. No lame in my game. Uber driver says Kelleher likes his two bishops. I think every master likes his two bishops. I never noticed that. Never like noticed that particularly about Bill. He plays like the Slav and stuff. I mean, you can give up a bishop in that opening. I never noticed that interesting theory. Talking about random chess players that you guys don't know. Fide Master, William Kelleher. A New England player who was undoubtedly I am strength at one point, but he never traveled abroad to to really try for the I am title. Strong senior master. Castles, d6. Yeah, but I mean, Dimitri Las, yeah, this player is... Look at his ratings, 18, 19, 18, 21, 18, 21. It's like some sort of troll thing. He's trying to get 18, 21, exactly. Plays for like 18, 21 chess club or something. 1821.com. So what do I do now? Black has like a perfect position. My knight's just on a3. I don't know why it's there. It just is. It just is. No, no, this is his... This is, I mean, a very common setup against all closed queen pawn systems. If you play the black side of the King's Indian, I think the London system, the Tory attack, the Kali system, against pretty much everything, um, you know, probably playing a double fianchetto is, is more or less usual sort of strategy. He's used no time, and he's playing no nonsense. Although, another player who doesn't seem like he really gets into the weird opening thing. He just plays what he's going to play. It doesn't really matter. He doesn't care so much. Playing for the white squares. My knights like white squares. Playing completely on intuition. Bob's big boy. Have you been to a Bob's big boy? I don't. I just remembered that. That's a restaurant. Is it still in existence? American. Bob just subscribed. Twitch Prime. Twenty-two months in a row. Bob's big boy, Big Bubba, VIP member. This is such a weird position. I really don't know where to start. He's going to surround my, my D-pawn. Man. <sighs> Just playing obscenely fast.
killer of bishops. I mean, killer of knights. Anti-knight detector. It's like... This is an Israeli missile system. It's just... <sighs> detecting knights that are going to attack my D-pawn. Destroy. I would just take out a knight on b6 so that missile defense system. Anything that tries to attack d5. These knights are waiting. Waiting for their day. Well, you other guys... You know, you're, you're all concentrating on chess. The difference between Bob and everyone else is that Bob is the only one who's not paying attention to chess here. So it's like, it's a diversion. It's nice to have a little diversion now and then from the chess. Hard not to take with a knight, frankly. Frankly, my dear. But again, not really my preferred school of time management here from Dimitri Lass. He just blundered the house. Check. First night. What is chess interpersonal connection? You know, this is my therapy group, basically. It's not a chess dream. You guys are my psychological therapy group. I guess therapy group is the wrong word, okay? We should call it a support group. Support group, okay? Better terminology. More accurate. The Nefidov Bloby School of Time Management. I'm I'm using the Alexander Ivanov School of Time Management. You just use it. Smoke them if you got them. I mean, if I have time, I want to use it as much as I can. And sometimes it burns me in the end, but. Acerbate, thank you for the donation. Um, big bit rally. Acerbate started off. Tomorrow night is our subscriber stream. I almost forgot. I have to send a message to remind everyone. See how many viewers we have momentarily. Eight viewers. <laughs> our Twitch is like not really working. Um, Pepe Lou is streaming. 43 souls 43 in the support group 50 bit rally time was that you bob 50 bits i'll see your 50 bits and raise you 300 whoa almost blundered blundered Give me an H file. And I'll give you the world. I like his queen on B7, though. H6. Lunar probe.
putting my king on g2 never was a good idea. <laughs> um, with that queen on b7. I'm going to blunder. Blunder this. And I have no time to write down notes or anything because Dimitri just wants to run me over on a clock. Thank you for the bits. 150 from Asturbate and Bob. Subscriber stream. Click. Yes, so I've been playing h4 since move 1, basically. <laughs> Just got a chance to play it now in queen h4. So I achieved h4, h5, queen h4, and c3, all according to plan. The queen never made the tour from a4 to h4, Merle. I mean Uber, sorry. They're both in the house. Do you guys ever get each other confused? King h2 or king g2. The fuchsia, the pride flags. Masturbate unlocked the pride flag yesterday. Oh my god. Not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. I can always play f3. Not afraid to bust the f3. I like e6 here for black. Instant death. Maybe you could have put up more resistance by... And usually I jinx myself when I say something like that. Maybe you could have put more resistance by... Um... Alright, this is like a... Sham sacrifice. Shamco. I played Shamco. I'm old school. I've had at least kind of an interesting chess career playing different players from different generations. You've got another, you know, hopefully another 30 years in the tank, but you got to be thankful for every day that you have. Queen takes d5. So much simplicity. Yeah, there's nothing, I mean, for black here. No weaknesses. The queen is just... I was just going over a Spassky game today. Spassky was really good about, like, centralizing his queen. Just brutally. We should play the Elephant Gambit. Mark Hebden favorite. And here comes the cheapo, the big one. Knight e5. Please, no. No, he didn't want to do that. Changed his mind, he found a different cheapo. All right. He's going after my G-pawn. Oh, I didn't expect that. All right. Got him. G5 is a sneaky way of preparing H5, I guess. I mean, Knight H5. Doesn't really matter, does it? It's kind of overly cautious.
Knight, no match for Rook on open board. No counterplay. Yeah. The mean rook c8. Got him. Yes. All right. So, the school of time management. Another. Another believer in the Egyptian school. But who has more time now? All right. Quantics and save a dog. He's strong. Strong. Quantics, we've played twice. Bobby with a fish icon. <laughs> All right. What's up, guys? Weird openings today. We've got an hour left in the stream. Let's get a couple more challenges. Got time. Oh, save a dog's back. Quantics, if Quantics... I'm, I'm supposed to play the first move. Okay, my bad. Okay, we'll start with E4 and see if we can make up something interesting. Dim is Gronk. Gronk is not coming back. To the New England Patriots. He's really retiring. Queen h5. No, not against the Sicilian. I can kind of see the fun in playing it against e4, e5. Yeah, I mean, Gronk is smart to retire. He's got this beautiful, beautiful girlfriend. Millions and millions of dollars. Why get some more concussions when you can just quit while you're ahead? Um, e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. They gotta stop playing sports stars, paying sports stars so much or little. They'll all quit early. They lose the incentive. Okay, we need a weird opening here, guys. I'm failing to come up with something. Okay, let's play this. Okay, what's next? What's next? We'll find something interesting later. <laughs> okay, so e5. Let's try something weird. This is probably not good. Sort of Zoltan Varga. <laughs> F3. No, now black's threatening D5. So I might I might have serious problems now. He's threatening D5, and if I play knight C3, he plays bishop B4. Then I play A3, bishop A5. Threatening knight takes e4, so I have to play b4. Then we get into the twilight zone. He can also just play bishop c5 here. I mean, this is not really good for white, but I wanted to play something weird. It's uh, it's knight e2 against the Kalashnikov, is what it is. Trying to play something uh, a-theoretical. But it's asking for trouble. Knight e4 is the threat. Maybe I have some other options here. Queen d3. Can I try this? It's the queen d3 variation. Unfortunately, an opponent I don't know anything about. I don't remember playing them. I was up a rook. And 
and I won a lot of pieces there. Man, that was... When was that? You can't tell, though. I don't like the way that Lee Chess doesn't put the date on games. Like, when you go to your history and look at your games, not to hate on Lee Chess, because I love Lee Chess, but, but I wish it didn't say, like, three days ago, you know? I guess it says the date. You know, I'm, I'm just hating on the, on the, on the recent history. I mean, it says the date if you go to the PGN or whatever. All right, castles. Whatever. I'm just talking a lot of nonsense, basically. BG5. Oh, it's Joaquin Doral. Queen D3 after F5 in the Sveshnikov. I lost against Joaquin in a Accelerated Dragon. Now, I don't remember how or what it was. You know what? Maybe I don't remember. Somehow I lost to Doral on the black side of an Accelerated Dragon. He probably played something a little off the beaten track. I don't remember what the deal was. I think I told you I underestimated him. He was like this old man who was an IM but rated like 2150. Um, but I can't recall what it was. Maybe I overpressed. He didn't like crush me or something. So what do we do here? We're taking... Surrendering the dark squares for life. No. I don't think I should surrender the dark squares for life. Man, this is a bit of a problem. My whole plan was bad. So bishop h4, g5, bishop g3. I guess we have to try this. It's going to get weird. But at least f2 is safe. Nineteen fifty nine candidates match. What's that? Who was that between? Oh, nineteen fifty nine candidates tournament. Three days ago is confusing. Thirty eight days ago, yeah. I'm like scrolling through my games. It's like eight days ago. Eleven days ago, you know. Um, okay, that isn't useful. We should straighten them out, Fuchsia. Not useful information. 15 days ago. Watch that on TV. <laughs> the 59 candidates match? What are you talking about? I watched the Beverly Hillbillies. And there was one journalist who, just to get in my anti-Donald Trump for the day, he equated like the Trumps going, going to the going to the United Kingdom to meet the the royal family, like the Beverly Hillbillies. I thought that was pretty funny, like um, parallel actually. Bishop G three, we go for it, yes. Go for it. Artificially isolating the pawn at G4. But I don't trust this opening that I played. Don't do this, what I did in this game, okay, guys? Do as I say, not as I do. Here we go again. <sighs> I gotta get out of this pin eventually. Where am I gonna castle? Exactly. Don't do this at home. Bishop takes f6, queen f6, knight d5, winning a piece. No, not quite. Now castle queenside. 
But 95 right away is sort of interesting, isn't it? In a way. Quit 99 F5. While you sleep in earthly delight, where you're so oh, oh, great, okay. Account created six minutes ago. <laughs> Relevant. Have we had that before or are they they're they're moving in from another chest trolling another chest stream or something? Um Relevant, whatever. It was very relevant. I'll repent for insulting Donald Trump or something. I don't know. Okay, what do we do now? You don't need this, right? The night is forever. It's like a diamond. Diamond is a girl's best friend. Thou half. Thou hath repent. Repent for thou. Lack of control of the white squares. <laughs> I'm not going to play Knight C7 just on principle. I refuse to take moves from the audience. I wouldn't have even seen it if you hadn't noticed it. Noticed the word. Yeah, actually, um, my local Fidia Master coin dealer, Charlie Hurtown, he specializes in precious metals. <laughs> yeah, he was telling me, he was complaining a lot about how like commercial jewelry stores just absolutely rip you to shreds. Like, they're charging at least double what things are worth. So, like, literally, diamonds are a scam. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want... I don't want that stinking C7 fork. 96. <laughs> that doesn't work. Now I'm going to have to be simplistic. Black fell short. Black failed to achieve d5. I mean, he could have achieved d5 early on and had a really good game. And um, he sinned. He hath sinneth for not achieving a d5. Well, Bob, honestly, I mean, if it's... You no, know, it could be an investment, you know. That's normal. I mean, people invest in all sorts of inanimate objects. Gold. Quantix is not giving up. All right. Now you may be angry. Gold does have uses, but diamonds have uses too. So there, take that. The hardest substance known to man has uses. See? Mate is mate. Okay. I want to thank that crazy troll for helping me to remember to repent. Save a dog. The mating master. Okay, Save Dog's back from his little vacation. We've got 45 minutes left in the stream. Guys, please support the stream. Don't forget. I have no conventional job, so I need you. <laughs> I need you to help me stay alive. Support the stream. Make a donation. Subscribe. I would ask you to take lessons, but I don't have time for any more students now because of my job at the flea market. So, my second job, selling random objects. Um, 
takes up a lot of time. Cat food. Cat food is gross. We used to have cats. I remember being a kid and like sniffing the cat food and being like, hmm. you know what? I couldn't eat that if. I mean, I know these like modern gourmet cat foods, you know, are kind of. kind of sexy. Almost like people food. But in the old days, my cats, like I remember my parents, like the cats didn't like the cat foods. We used to actually feed them baby food instead of cat food, and they loved it. They would eat like legit like Gerber baby food. So we literally fed the cats baby food instead of normal cat food. C4, C6. Selling random objects. I'm a main cast member on Pawn Stars. I, sh I can open a pawn shop. I have this like crazy amount of useless objects around me. Fresh meat only. Just don't let him loose on Bob, okay? You know, you see those commercials about, like, that special cat food that's, like, looking like smoked salmon, almost. People will buy anything. I buy my cat smoked salmon. Bishop F5... So this is just supposed to be a mistake, but one thing that always bothered me here while we get away from the crazy chat, there's a question as to whether it's queen b3 or c takes d5 first. And it's never been clear to me which one of these two moves is actually better, oddly. Sell me the treasure map. Yeah, I've got a Lewis Chessman in the drawer downstairs for a cool mill. I'll hook you up. Five dollars. Um, Uber driver, what are you talking about? Queen B3, Knight C6? There was this guy in Harvard Square I used to play for money in Blitz. Time odds, and the guy insisted on playing Queen B3, Queen B6, and losing a pawn on D5 every game. Something like that. It would go like Queen B3, Queen B6, CD5, Knight D5, Knight D5, CD5, Queen D5. It would just continue. After two years, he just kept playing the same thing, thinking it was okay. You know, after I beat him like 75 out of 80 games. He still hadn't figured out that, you know, what he was playing was a good... Oh, so somebody gave save a dog a move? Yeah, this is a crazy line. Okay. I remember this. Yeah, I think even, like, Ding Li Ren or someone good. One of those really strong Chinese grandmasters. Like, they're all just, like, Ding Li Ren, but... All I remember it for sure is that it was a Chinese GM. I think this position is, like, Queen takes B7. Bishop D7? I don't know about queen c8. The Danny Kopech variation? No, no. That was in the martial defense. That's even worse. Well, no, they're probably on the same level. That was martial defense. Queen c8 doesn't look right to me. If I just take, he's going to have very quick knight, D, knight to b4 threats. But the queen itself is not well placed on on c8. You know, so it kind of looks like I should probably move my queen again. But then rook b8 comes in. Huh. It's a mystery. I mean, if you had to, you could play queen c8, rook c8, a3. That's pretty insipid. Don't really want to do that. Bobby just made a huge donation. Wow. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six hundred and five. You got an emote thanks to Bloby's mega cheer. Pride lion champ, I think it said. Bloby almost catching up to Astrobate. Astrobate with 1100 today. Clearing 1100. Fuchsia knows the bishop d7. 
guys, I don't know this. What is this? This isn't sound. Somewhat unsound. Bloby, thank you so much, man. Into the green with Acerbate. You guys are great. Acerbate and Bloby are great. What am I going to do? So seriously, queen c8, rook c8. Knight b4 is a serious problem. But there is weird stuff. Like you can play e3, knight b4, bishop b5 check. Very inconvenient for white. But at the end of the day, I'm getting away. I'm here to say that I'm getting away. I mean, this is crazy, dude. Now, as Arsenal fan raises an interesting point that there are E4 type of ideas in the Slav, Slavi positions. Slavi. E4 is often a bust. I mean, G4 also is a kind of bust them up type of surprise move that is very effective in some positions. But I mean, it seems like white should have something much more straightforward here. But it looks like queen b3, rook b8 is pretty nasty. So I waste a lot of time. a3 again, last resort. a3, knight a5, knight d2, very ugly and passive position. Save a dog. Save a dog's blitz rating is, is realistic. 1400, right? Now, what other options? Yeah, I guess we're going to go with e3. There's e4. We're going to play this. Bishop b5 check. How does that work? I get out. I get out. We're just getting out. Worst case scenario, I have a draw. I'll sack the exchange with knight h4. First of all, he has to put his king on on a on d8, which is awful. Um, or retreat his knight, opening himself up to pins. Merle Dixon with another donation on the seven hundred and two. Bob donated thirty for LGBTQ. While it looks dubious, it is at least easy to learn. <laughs> Sounds like an advertisement for the London system. But e6 looks kind of too conservative. You are too conservative. Knight b4 was the way to go. Now knight e5. Knight e5 is possible. We really ought to seriously consider our options here. Knight e5, take, take, knight to d7. Then I have to play f4. There's all sorts of issues. Issue is with the issues. There are issues with the issues. So there's still issues here. It's so unfair. <laughs> This has got to be okay for me. Whatever, I'm up a pawn. Whatever. Save a dog. It's hard to understand your 1400 blitz rating. I don't get that, considering you don't use any time here. All of you guys are the same. Playing too fast. 
Well, Uber, Uber driver is referring to the Tarash, you know, Henning Sharak Ambit, which is reams of theory specialists will know. So now night before, it's a little late for that to have a lot of effect. But black still has some sort of lingering compensation. Benko-like compensation, according to Fuchsia. Benko-esque. I'm trying to create a roach motel for the Black Knight at C2. Roaches get in, but they don't get out. How can you be unemployed and have two different jobs at the same time? Well, they don't, you know... <laughs> That's a good question. They're not real jobs. Um, I don't have, like, health coverage. I don't consider it a real job unless I have health coverage and dental. Tal said the purpose of the Benko Gambit was so Benko could play 30 quick moves and avoid time trouble. There was hardly any Benko theory back then. It was in its infancy, really. A really nice bucket of cheer. From Bloby. Limited time emote. Emote. Opal's still alive. He's in Budapest, Hungary, my other my other home. Haven't seen him in a long time. He's 90. I don't know, 90, 91. He's around 90, 91 this year, I think. 91, probably. But I could be wrong. Could be off by one year. I'm guessing 91. Paul Benko. Most legendary, one of the more legendary grandmasters alive today. But he hasn't played chess, you know, actively since I've been playing chess. Basically, he's been inactive. I mean, he's been a problem composer, specializing in composition and end games since the 80s. I think he was at like my first tournament ever 1985 New Jersey Open. I think he actually played in that tournament. I remember I was in the under 1800 section of the 1985 New Jersey Open, and it was like Benko and Bizgeyer were two of the top seeds. That's how old... I know that I'm a vampire and never get older, but I was playing in that tournament. Bishop E2. Yes. Nice job by Save a Dog with his Benko style counterplay. That'll be enough. 1400, obviously. Run of the mill 1400 Blitz player. I, Elephant Bush. I gave up playing online, pretty much. I still have some accounts, but I don't play. And I'm out of date with resources for online poker since I haven't been playing much since 2015. Um, not really the best guy to ask. I basically gave up playing online poker actively around the end of 2015. But improving, I, mean, I think it's like chess. You know, you need to take the same approach. Rhea. It has to be a combination of playing and, and study. You know, I studied poker a lot. I basically started playing poker when I was a kid, but I did get really into it until the big boom, the poker boom, happened in, in around 2000. So I, I got into poker for a good 15 years, but a lot of factors led me to to go back to chess full time. Bishop takes e4. 
I don't know, Save Dog is just suspiciously good. I don't buy his rating ever. Uber Driver, some guys switched to Batgammon. Well, I mean, there were guys before my time from Boston. Bill Roberti and, um, of course, Dan Harrington, who I missed by just a couple years. They, they wrote, of course, important poker book not that long ago. Um, but Harrington was a strong chess player. He was a master. And... Um, Roberti was the backgammon expert. I've heard of Herb Garland, but... Save a dog, you're too strong to be 1400 in Blitz, dude. What is your deal? I mean, seriously, what is his deal? What a monster. Compensation all the way home. Can't trap it. Trap a bishop. He just took my pawn like it's no problem. He just dropped a pawn. I just realized he's like seriously trying to beat me. Yeah, that that was an interesting game. Kind of a little too strong for 1400 in Blitz, dude. Um, yeah, I, I just should have been winning there, but you're too fast for me. Okay, um, next game, Aware Tenacious, 1920, 1960, 1601. This is like the same guy. Why is he like 1601 but 1960 in Rapid? I guess he's slow. All right, we'll try this. Aware Tenacious. You know Harrington, the the magician? Knight G2 in the Queen's Gambit. Well, I mean, you know, basically you do that in the exchange, in the exchange Queen's Gambit, which is pretty standard. I guess nowadays it is, maybe back then. Harrington, a book I'm reading right now, improve my chess skills. Like a different Harrington? Or did he actually write a book on chess because his poker books were successful? I have no clue. There's so many chess books. Right. I mean, Roberti's publishing these books. I mean, I think that Harrington probably, you know, did some of the work, but... Where's Jim today? They were successful selling the chess books, so they figured, oh, we'll try, I mean, the, the poker books, so we'll do some chess books too. But honestly, I mean, you know, Harrington wasn't a particularly strong chess master to be like authoring books. But then again, a lot of people author chess books who aren't particularly strong. Um, but obviously the poker books were good, so. I assume that it's not bad material. <laughs> cooking, cooking, Bob. Cooking books. Creamy, crunchy cookie, cupcake, candy. I think I did that wrong, but anyway. Where Tenacious. Oh, it's playing exactly like Dimitri. It's Dimitri's other account. 
If you average this guy's rating, it would average out to Dimitri's 18, 21, 18, 21, 18, 21. It's probably Dimitri. Let's do the same thing we did against him. The Arkle. Trade the white square bishops. Play for endgame. Is she related to Georgie Orlov? I never asked that. You know, it was kind of too, too obvious a question. Probably, like, should have thought of that before. All right. Knight takes g2, knight on b, d7. <coughs> Your approach is treat every chess book as a bet. <laughs> that sounds interesting, um, but not a traditional approach. I teach, I, I, I teach, I teach. I treat every chess move as um, the position is... We're trying to improve improve the overall health of the position. A holistic approach to the position. Um, aware. Be aware. Tenacious. All right, what am I doing here? I was supposed to play weird openings. I totally forgot. Sorry, guys. I got I got off track with the, with the chat today. We didn't play a weird opening here today in this game. I'm sorry. I apologize profusely. Uber driver predicting game one against Dimitri. There's the troll. We love it. Very original. That was entertaining. Did I get it before you could copy and paste? It's not about saying anything bad. I'm mean, gonna have to just be consistent, man. Welcome everybody. Thank you for supporting the stream. I will try to play one more weird opening next game. I got confused. All right. I get distracted by the chat sometimes. But don't encourage them, Bob. Seriously, that's enough. I know you're bored. Go bite a snake or something. He bit his snake. Get revenge, Bob. He wants to have private chat. <laughs> right up your alley. Okay, I'm focusing on the white squares again. Dreaming of a white Christmas. Maybe knights on d5, h4, h5, mate on h8. It looks like Aware Tenacious just left the building. Elvis has left the building. I don't think they're there anymore. There's a kind of funny problem here. Where is Tenacious? E6, so... Look at this. If C5... The Hippo-Hog... Hippo-Hog approach... Of course, Black could end up like the famous game Botvinnik versus Lilienthal. Um, but... That's, I think, in um, the most instructive chess games ever played. Probably better to get that than a Harrington book. The most instructive chess games ever played by Chernev. Really, I believe in like old school fundamental chess books. They're not all like glitzy and fancy and stuff, but the important information is there. Um, but seriously, if Black had played c5, I can't play d5. Because c5, d5, knight e5, and it's hasta la vista, c4 pawn. So if Black affects c5, I now have a problem. He's trading his C pawn for my D pawn. And there doesn't seem to be a particularly great way for me to handle that. So I think he missed he missed his best opportunity in that position, you know, playing C5. Obviously C5 is still on the table. 
but it shouldn't be quite as effective now. The whole situation changes a bit with, with E6. Provoking weaknesses. That's a kind of advanced concept in chess. Ryshevsky, Uber Driver talks about Ryshevsky. He wrote a great book, pretty much his only book, like The Art of Positional Play, one of his only books anyway. Um, many time US champion Samuel Ryshevsky had like a massive chess career spanning 70 years. So the book, The Art of Positional Play, is is a collection of his games and some other games that illustrate strategic ideas in chess. Um, I think essential. The 1948 book of his games, The Amazing Photos. Uber Driver's like a chess historian, in addition to being a competent player and Merle's brother. My first inclination was to take, but it's such a cop out here for white to just take. The bishop, however, doesn't have a really great future. Bishop power. Taking is the simplest. All 16 pawns are on board. Reminds me a little of the Trompowski, except he doesn't have double pawns. But that's a strong piece. I mean, this, this is really better than a knight, I think objectively. I mean, bishop f4 does stop c5, but it has all sorts of other liabilities. Like, it's a target, you know. e5 with tempo, although, I don't know. Generally speaking, you should place your pieces behind the pawns. That's another great book, Modern Chess Opening Theory by Alexei Swayton. He talks about this concept, very important strategic concept, coordination of pieces and pawns. My pieces are placed behind the pawns so that the enemy pieces can't like kick them around. That's important in closed positions, not in, in open positions so much. That's enough strategic lecturing. Okay, guys, we've got 20 minutes left, and I was getting too serious. Too serious. Doesn't recommend Queen H5. <laughs> this is kind of a Tony Miles-like approach when I'm taking. When I played with Miles, he would just simply kill me in positions like this. There were, there were like weaknesses, a little bit of weaknesses on the white squares, and it was over, you know? I mean, just this tiny, tiny weakness, and it was like, I don't know, no way to, to escape once once he would latch on to this just tiny weakness. A nice move A6, actually trying to fight for the white squares in this position. Aware Tenacious. Mystery player. Very advanced move. I'm wondering about the placement of my my rooks here. What would Botvinnik do? Botvinnik. B5 is the black idea now, as I run out of time. Random, random moves. Dot com. John Koss. Do you prefer bishops or knights when playing chess as white? It doesn't matter about the color. Howard Staunton said that bishops were worth three and a half points of material and knights were worth three. I think that Howard was exaggerating a little bit in his book, The American Chess Player's Handbook. But generally speaking, bishops are a stronger piece than a knight. It depends on the position, though. You know, in this position, 
This bishop has great potential. Um, a little bit stronger than your average knight, but there are so many pawns on the board, you know, so it's not color dependent. I mean, it's really dependent on how closed or open the position is. Knight f4. Clawing at some sort of hope for a for an outpost somewhere. Maybe one day by night we'll get to an outpost. Jim's here finally. You made it. Um no, I mean, I have a book that was published called Staunton's American Chess Player's Handbook, I guess, in the 40s. And and it was like three and a half points for, for bishops. Fisher, I don't know if he believed that, maybe. We missed you, Jim. All right, C5. Whoever this character is, aware, tenacious, they seem really strong. Somehow I'm not surprised. Scary name, you know, weird ratings, like the 1600 blitz, 1500 bullet, but 19, 19, 19 in the, in the slower games. When was this account created? It's probably someone else who has multiple accounts that I've played before. Maybe it's Tushar. There were no Tushar. Bobby, you, you were a little bit lacking in the Tushar jokes today. Tushar suspicions. Tushar could be sneaking up on our stream disguised as aware, tenacious. Queen e7. Wait. What did Mubat do? Mubatian. The well, thanks, Bob. I mean, I appreciate if you like other streamers. I like Mark, he's cool. So what am I doing now? Trying to break through. Sacrifice a peace. Peace be with you. Black's very solid. I don't know who this character is. They seem pretty strong. No time to play the best moves here. This is no time for best moves. Just have to play whatever we can get. Sort of H5, sacrifice. What do you call an edible sacrifice? Quick! Snackrifice. Bob got it. Good job, Bob. We'll see how strong Black is here. Ooh, that was a mistake. He actually made a mistake. Wow. Very small one. This is kind of a weird move, F4, but I have to kind of break it open somehow. I might regret this. It 
somehow aware of Tenacious is too aware, too tenacious. Just too good. Look at this. Sees everything. Finally a small mistake. Or is it? What am I doing? I'm freaking out a little bit. Look how good he is. He's 1600 in Blitz. Maybe I'm winning. Maybe. Damn, did he have Rook check there? He's definitely aware and definitely tenacious. Now he resigned. Is that even a good res? I guess he's going to get mated, yeah. Is he going to get mated, though? Can he go with those pawns? So rook d7, rook d7. Yeah, it's too slow. e4, king f6. I can use my pawn to mate it. If I don't have, if he has a pawn on g5, this is kind of touch and go. <laughs> if I didn't have this g5 move, honestly, I would be really frightened right now. Um, but I guess it would still not be enough. Like, I'd just go back. Go back and freeze it, and then walk back. Yeah, so it's easily winning. I don't know. He lives on the increment there. The Greek island. Sounds like a good life to me. I'll take a Greek island any day. I made no inaccuracies. So what do you got for challenges? Guys, there's time for one more game. Who's going to be the lucky victim? Last game. Five plus three only. Five plus three only. Last game. Mykonos. All right. I think they already tried that, Bob. I was worse. At one point. I thought maybe I got carried away at the end, but the engine actually liked it. I was afraid I went too far at one point in this game, like here. I honestly didn't know for sure I was winning here. Because these two pawns look awful scary, but I guess this I'm just eating that one on C5. My two pawns are better than your two pawns. Now I got three challenges. I can only take one. All right, Blubix, because John challenged me to a rated. I don't do rated. We'll end it with a Blobix game. All right, last game. Masturbate. Um, John, actually, give me a challenge. I'll play you. Give me a casual challenge. We'll make it two games. I'll do it. Quick. Challenge me to 5 plus 3 casual. Okay? Our new friend here. John Koss. But last, last games. I'm waiting for my friend, Joe. He had... He's an international master, but he... Gave up playing chess to be a dog sitter. Um, better money dog sitting, basically. Um, he's going to be down a little bit later. We'll have some chicken dinner. All right, Blobix. Chicken dinner. I'm so hungry. Beer is food, they say, but it's not that filling. Uber driver can't believe this? What's up? He's not going to fall for this, is he? You know this is the Cairo Clyde. This is actually quite okay for white. I beat your Malinsky with white in this line. 
Well, it just has to know what they're doing. Blobix is like frozen. No, but that was... Yeah, because he played bishop c1, which is like the worst move on the board. Um, <laughs> bishop c1, you can do in the knight orf, but not here. This is what I played against Yermo, Uncle Yermo. I like bishop g5. Actually, this is a game Hikaru Nakamura played against me. We had a game where Hikaru was white and I was black in this line. I believe it was a draw. But I have most recently a draw in the Hungarian team championship in this variation. I tried queen b6, but it's not so not so great. Black has to play h6 and g5. Slightly weak in the king side. I had a quick draw against um, Hungarian IM in the Hungarian team championship last year. This exact line. Okay, this is like kind of the starting position for the variation. The Carol Clyde variation is actually bishop b5, which is violent. I beat Brian Smith in that with black years ago. But I think bishop g5 is more reliable. But I had this all prepared for for a Hungarian guy. And we had a quick draw. Knight b3. So I think this is my game. Something not familiar about this now. Now, I can't remember my own game from last year. Okay, bishop e6 is one of the moves, but I played bishop takes c3 check. And then h5? h4? Does that seem right? Why can't I remember my own game from last year? Why is that difficult to do? And how did it get a draw? How did I agree to a draw so quickly? I feel like it's h5, but maybe not. Maybe I just played bishop e6, now I can't remember. h5, h4. I mean, even h5, h3 is okay for white. Anyway, I'm on my own. I totally forgot my own analysis. It sucks. H4. Forgetting your own analysis sucks. Knight F6. I feel like there he misses the opportunity to play the structure a little differently. This is the food the, the food poisoning variation too. I lost to Le Alex Lenderman when I got food poisoning in the opening of the game against him in 2003. The tournament director <laughs> wouldn't give me my entry fee, like even like a small refund. I was kind of pissed. I thought like, come on. I'm wasting a lot of time. Bishop e6. Well, knight e4. Crushing move for white here. Crushing strategic move. <sighs> Just kidding.
It's just a Blitz game. After all. Knights are knights. Bishops are bishops. The blob is going for f4. Two knights versus two bishops. Opening the position. The blob. The uber knights. Uber knights of uber driver. I guess we're going to have to castle queenside. Needless to say. Lining up his armies. The armies of Armageddon. Obviously, I don't want to get hit by, like, bishop g4. An inconvenient moment. Bobby's very direct. He's all about, like, active pieces and just primitive... Stuff. Did you see the game he played against me yesterday where he tried to annihilate me in the Karo Khan? This is a shocking move from Blubby, actually. Trading queens? I mean, he's possibly better here, but I thought that's out of character. Kind of Eric out of character for him. He must be tired or something. White is probably better, but it's the opposite of what he did yesterday. I thought he was going to trade queens against me. And he didn't trade queens. Now I thought he wasn't going to trade queens, and he did trade queens. You can never predict what this guy's going to do. Smyslav versus Botvinnik. French winnower variation. You got to lick the bishops a little bit here. Yes, probably that's true. Nice bishops, but the knights aren't so bad. Transferal. Transferal of knight. The Grishuk knight. The new name when he lost in the Pomiachi in the World Cup. <laughs> he played knight a5. I was like groaning. Um, this is a Grishuk knight. Let's see, we had a missed call. Uh oh, it's Joe. Let's call Joe. Probably thinks the stream is over. Oh, it's my turn. Hey Joe, what's up man? Still streaming. Okay, okay. We'll we'll keep the uh I got the fridge stocked, so you're all set if you want some chicken or something later. Alright. Alright man, later. Bye. So that's International Master Joe. My chess librarian. And gardener friend okay bishop g4 how do we make this work make it work make it work be the ball I don't want to allow him to play a5 if I don't have to how do we be the ball here I knew you'd get around to that. Joe likes the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. Don't worry, Bob. Jim just cheered 250. Greetings for I am Joe. Joe had late, late dog sitting duty. Joe's sister's dog got bit at the dog park by a larger dog. Had to have like emergency surgery last week. Guess it still still needs extra care. Got to be careful, those 
public dog parks. Bob, you might get bit by something. The knight... The knight has flexibility that the bishop lacks sometimes. This is a very tense situation. He's going for it. They're both going for it. What a choice now. I could have also just taken that pawn on c4. I wanted to get coordinated. Coordinated. Ninety four looks pretty nasty, actually. How's he going to defend G2? He's just not going to defend G2. Not going to do it. Has Bob beaten me yet? Yeah, you can see he's got a win there. At least one. Not today. Bishop G4. Okay, he's trading into the end game, but this looks over. It's not easy. E6. Why am I going so slow? King of Fate is a ridiculous move. My god. How do I finish him off? Failure to find a way to win. One big happy family. heck am I doing? <sighs> Do this all over again? Please, God, don't let me blunder. How can this not be a win? It has to be a win. He's done a fantastic job defending this. I have to give him credit, man. Yum, yum. Give me that. Getting hungry.
What a game. 74 moves. Of pure happiness. Jake Koss. Last game. Whew, I don't think that end game was <laughs> correct. Um, a little bit of inaccuracies going around there for both sides. You're welcome, Bloby. Thanks for playing. That was fun. Nice defensive effort at the end. Got to give him credit for that. All right, so he's playing an Astrobate defense, a tempo down. Not really, though. Astrobate doesn't play this. He plays the check bony with the pawns on c4. Basically, black lost a move there. Fairly relevant waste of tempo, e6, e5, in two moves. Snake Benoni style. Phony Benoni. A5, bishop c7, d6. Knight, bishop takes a5, knight takes e5. That's just too weird. You don't play chess too often. Wow. No, that's cool. You know, this is not that bad. I know that sounds like an underhanded compliment, but no, seriously, it's not that bad. Black follows up accurately here. The snake Benoni can be playable. This is the key square for white in any of these Benonis. You want to try to, when you don't play c4 in this closed check Benoni structure, you want to get the knight to c4. And you don't want it to get traded off. This is power, a power square. So sadly, I'm not going to be a materialist about this. What would Ryshevsky do? Right? Uber driver. The rook is the rook is looking river guarding rook. Black makes a crazy sacrifice now. Basically giving a piece to try to create a mobile center. I mean, I can't believe that's possible here. Really crazy sacrifice, but you know, okay. Almost almost reasonable idea but not quite. I don't think you have enough. If you could get d5, get your center rolling, you'd be okay, but it's not going to work. I have bishop takes f6. The d5 pawn drops. Good idea, but the execution is, is impossible here. Black losing another piece. It's over. Over driver. Knight c6. Funny move. <laughs> this is really funny. Be a little bit greedy. Knight c6, queen c7. Knight takes d5, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, bishop e6. And then it's like kind of an awkward moment. Oh, I have knight e7 check, queen c7, bishop c7, bishop d5, bishop f8. I guess I'm winning there. But I don't think this is the best move, probably. Does this even work, actually? <laughs> anyway, I'm up two pieces. It doesn't matter. But always try to be accurate. You know, I don't under want to underestimate the opponent, no matter what the rating is, no matter how much material I'm up. You know, you try... To, that's how accidents happen. I mean, I've seen Grandmasters 
drop rooks and queens and accidents can always happen. You can never be too safe. So guys, thanks for joining my stream. Tomorrow night, um, we do a subscriber stream every Thursday. So if you're a subscriber to the stream, you can submit a game to my account here, Spark Horse on Nietzsche's. And um, we'll go over those games, 10 to 12 games with the subscribers from 5.30 p.m. tomorrow night. Hum hum. So... Snappy, crafty tactics. Indirectly defending my pieces while eliminating his center in a kind of fun way. How dare you? <laughs> Bishop g4. Knight e7 check. The most accurate win of the queen. It was fun. Fun stuff, guys. Last game for today. Thanks, everybody, for having fun with me. Mate! Don't drop the mate on D1. End of the stream, guys. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for the Jane, the Jane, the John, the game. Everybody, thank you. It was fun. So next stream, subscriber stream tomorrow night. It was my pleasure. We'll be back um, again tomorrow night. Simul on Sunday. Another stream on Friday. The Friday stream is in the afternoon, twelve thirty Eastern time. So thank you guys for supporting the stream. Acerbate, Bloby, Jim. Special thanks to those guys, Merle Dixon, Dragon BC, Oms, Mr. Coffee, Bob Sakamano. Obviously, to all of you who subscribe to the stream, it was it was my pleasure um, to do these. It is my pleasure to do these streams. So, I will see you later. International Master Joe is coming down, and um, he'll be here with his roving chess library. So maybe I'll have some chess books to talk about tomorrow. Okay, guys, take care. Bye bye, and bye from the the panda. Honda substitute later. Bye-bye. You're not the real Panda dude. Okay. <laughs>